Yo, yo, yo! What's happening? You're right, I want. There we are! <laughs> the reveal! The big reveal! Shocking, I know! Because you. Uh, nobody knew what, what the music was from. Anyways. Um, I think. Did the title change? Can you see, guys see the title change? Oh, it did change. It just caught up over there as well. I think I think something weird's going over, th going on over there. I think it's frozen, at least a couple of times. It's it's quite far behind, but that's fine. I can still see the chat, and that's the most important thing. But anyway, right. So today, today marks the return of Fallout Fridays, and you lovely people have spoken, and you all chose Fallout Four, which I'm actually kind of relieved um, that you did. Um, because, um, if it was Fallout 3, Fallout 3, um, Fallout 3, I'm not, uh, my, my memory's not amazing for Fallout 3. Um, so, uh, I would have had to have done, like, a, a ton of last minute research for that game. But, Fallout 4 is, Fallout 4 is, like, kind of, uh, it's kind of easier to remember as well. It's not as, um, how do I put it? It's not dumbed down as such, but... It wasn't that, um, I think Bethesda learned the wrong lesson from Fallout 3 because they put a lot of Fallout 3's interest and stuff tucked away uh, that for you to find. It was very much a game that rewarded explorers. Um, and uh, because, uh, like, even the fan base of Fallout uh, give a lot of hate to Fallout 3, um, I think that they learned the wrong lesson from that. And Fallout 4 kind of puts things in front of you so you can't miss them. A good example of that is the um, games in the Pip-Boy, uh, the, the holo tapes that you pick up. They're literally dotted around like the main quest line so you can't miss them. Um, which is a bit of a shame but uh, Fallout 4 though, I'm, I'm relieved that we're playing Fallout 4 because Fallout 4 is a ton of fun. I, I dearly love this game, uh, I really do. And uh, although it's not as popular as New Vegas, um, I really, really do think a lot of this game. And we're going to have a ton of fun with this playthrough as well, okay? Um, it's a very interesting game. And there's going to be a ton to talk about straight off the bat as well. I think I've got my correct starting build uh, in my head. Um, <laughs> we'll go over that in a minute, though. It's a little bit worrying, but we should be okay. We should be okay. What we're going to do, okay, is we're going to jump straight into uh, a new game. Before I do that, though... Here's me. I almost forget in my. I'd forget my head if it wasn't screwed on, guys. You know. Um, let's get through the uh, shoutouts first of all, because there's a couple to get through. Uh, we'll start off with uh, with Lizard, of course, uh, and then then we'll jump in. I don't want to. Uh, don't want you to get drowned out by the cutscene and stuff. So let's play them now. Ooh, High Five Rush. How did you like that game, Lizard? I hope you enjoyed it because uh, I didn't play a lot of it, granted, but uh, I flipping loved it. When I did play, I was beaming, smiling from ear to ear the whole time. So I hope you enjoyed it. And then, of course, we got Beard. Uh, there we go, buddy. How are we doing? There we are. Ooh, Kina. <laughs> Those things that follow you around are amazing. I haven't played the game, but I already love them. I already love them. They, they, they are amazing. And of course, we got Salmon. Oh, they love this clip lately, Salmon. They really do, huh? They really do love this clip. <laughs> Terrifying stuff, and then uh, of course we got Colleen as well. And you've got this tweeted. <laughs> right, remember, Sack Boy, it will not be in vain. All those deaths, all those likes. <laughs> Go on, Colleen. This is a place one. <laughs> Did you make it? I want to know. I need to know if you made it. Right, I didn't forget anyone, did I? Shout at me if I if I forgot anyone. Shout at me now or forever hold your peace. I think we got everyone. I think we got everyone. Right, let's crack on. Uh, we're going to jump straight into a new game. Game. 
Oh, start a new game on survival. Um, I didn't think it actually asked you straight away. I thought you got an option uh, straight after uh, um, creating your character. But I guess you know you all, you guys all know me. If it, I I played like Fallout New Vegas on hardcore. I played Skyrim on survival since uh, we I well since we first started Skyrim. Of course, we're going to be playing on survival. Oh, I think I know why. Um, it's probably because it's on in the options on the menu screen. War. War never changes. <laughs> Lizard knows. Lizard knows. Colleen, it was a squad game. And you won. Nice. Fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. By the way, I think I'm in the right place. I don't think I'm going to be blocking anything, but we'll find out. I've gone a little tiny bit lower because I think there's notifications that come up in, the, in both corners. I can't quite remember though. War. War never changes. He said it. He said the line. <laughs> it's like that Simpsons meme. Meme. In the year 1945, my great great grandfather, serving in the army. Also, everything should sound and look okay, guys. Okay, if you don't, let me know. And the son he'd never seen. He got his wish when the U.S. ended World War II by dropping atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The world awaited Armageddon. Instead, something miraculous happened. We began to use atomic energy not as a weapon, but as a nearly limitless source of power. People enjoyed luxuries once thought the realm of science fiction. Domestic robots, fusion-powered cars, portable computers. But then, in the 21st century, people awoke from the American dream. Years of consumption led to shortages of every major resource. The entire world unraveled. Peace became a distant memory. It is now the year 2077. We stand on the brink of total war. And I am afraid. For myself. For my wife. For my infant son. Because if my time in the army taught me one thing. It's that war. War never changes. He said it again! Changes. You're gonna knock him dead at the veterans hall tonight, hon. You think? Absolutely. Now get ready and stop hogging the mirror. Right. <laughs> I kind of like that line. That line's kind of cute. Uh, anyway, right, okay, character creation. Uh, let me figure out how this works. It's a little bit weird. Um, are we gonna do a self-insert today? Is that what we're gonna do? Um, if that's the case... Facial hair... Where's the biggest beard? Oh hell yeah. Let's go with that. And I know I know what hair um I know what hair we're gonna go for. I got a hair in mind. Oh, I pressed the wrong button, but while we're here, we may as well change the color of the hair. Um I'm gonna go for uh I think I'm gonna go for a light brown. And uh style. Um where is it? Look at that hairline. Look at that hair. That's a fantastic hairline. That is that is quite possibly the best hair I've ever seen in a video game. Wait, did you get a haircut? Uh, but I totally duped you. Completely and utterly lied to you. And pulled the wool over your eyes because we're going to be playing as a lady. Oh, no. Don't don't confirm that. Uh, hey, that's the right button. Turn, 
We're gonna be we're gonna be played as a lady in Fallout 4. I um I've done like male playthroughs in the past. Uh because the male um because unlike um previous Fallouts, uh your protagonist in Fallout 4 actually has a backstory. Um and the male protagonist I feel is perfect uh for a Brotherhood of Steel run. Um the reason behind that is because your character doesn't only have uh, a backstory they have jobs in their backstory okay uh, the female is a lawyer and the male is a soldier um, ha as we just heard him do his monologue there at the beginning uh, about um, his grandfather being in the war in World War two etc um, he actually um, is an army soldier himself so it makes sense in my mind anyways it would make sense that um, when he comes across the Brotherhood um, he would see them as like you know a milit uh, a, like organized force that uh, would be the best option for the Commonwealth. So I have done a male playthrough in the past, but 99% of the time I play as a girl in Fallout 4, and there's reasons for that, and reasons we will cover shortly. But um, where his he's a soldier, she's uh, either a lawyer or, or something law uh, based, anyways. Which both um, pro those professions actually um, you would think would be. Uh, really interesting professions in um, in, in this universe, you know, because you know it, we hear about all like shady uh, goings on um, with uh, uh, law based. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that works. Sorry, with uh, I thought my thought I had my door going then. Uh, with like uh, lo loads of shady law practices in universe with things like you know uh, shady companies getting away with like. Uh, experiments etc so yeah um, and a guy who's seen a lot of action in say like Anchorage when the Chinese invade or um, you know it, it's just both very interesting occupations or so you would think anyways how do I change the color of her? Oh, I remember hold on let's go back a second uh, extras uh, I pretty much make my character the same every time as well uh, so, wait there, that's not what I want. Let's take all, mm. oh. So pretty. Let me figure out how to use the character customizer a moment. Right, let's take everything off a second, and we'll start from scratch. I'm sure there's a button to take everything off, but we'll go through it one by one. Um, right, so. One thing I do want to do, hold on. Oh, I didn't apply any of that, dang it. Uh, right, let's start that again. Right. Remove that. I don't want to spend forever either, because we want to get stuck into the game, of course. Uh, that'll do. Do you know what all of that will do? Let's accept that. How do I accept? That looks nice. There we go, that'll do. There's one tiny little adjustment that I do want to make, though. And that is, I want to give her yellow hair, so she's like uh, a, a vault girl. There we go, that'll do. Do you change your eye color as well? It's funny, because you can uh, give her uh, eyes which make her look like she's irradiated. Where was it? Look at, the <laughs> look at the state on those eyes. I don't think we want those eyes. Maybe later on, uh, when we've been wandering around in the wasteland, just uh, to represent like we've got some, uh, some radiation, maybe. Right, let's just go with steel. That'll do. I think Sean has my and uh, I think I think that's fine. I think that's fine. But like I say, there's other reasons why we're going to play as a lady as well. I'll cover them as and when we uh, they come across we come across them. <laughs> Give War a chance, Mel. Get right in. <laughs> right. Okay. Let me just uh, double check something a second. We oh we are definitely on uh, survival because if you notice there. Um, quick save and save are grayed out. Um, survival on Fallout 4 is a hell of a lot better than it is in uh, Skyrim. It's not, not to knock Skyrim in, on the whole as a game, okay? It's just the, the survival mode in Fallout 4, I think Bethesda nailed it. I think they absolutely nailed it. The only way we're going to be able to save in this game is by sleeping. There's no manual saving. There's no auto saving. There's no uh, quick saving. There's well, there's literally two ways actually. There's sleeping in a bed, 
or um, exiting the game because they brought in uh, exit save mechanic. Codsworth, you look a little weird. Are you normally that? Have you normally got that paint job? Thanks, Codsworth. Okay, now this uh, opening to the game as well. This opening is in stark contrast to everything that uh, Nate there was telling us uh, in the beginning. The the way the monologue that he d delivered to us is like they're in constant fear of all-out nuclear war. Um, if you know a bit more about the uh, the lore in general and the backstory of Fallout, we know things that there's like um, a, a man-made plague that the uh, government accidentally released into uh, into civilization. There's all sorts of nasty, horrible things going on at this period of time in Fallout because this is before the bombs drop. We're actually in pre um, pre uh, apocalypse America right now, but. After that dialogue that we've just been given where there's all this nasty stuff about to happen and they're all panicking and scared about the future. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Konnichiwa. <laughs> Thanks, uh... <laughs> Thanks, Colleen. Did it pop up on screen as well? Did that work? I hope that worked. My feed's a little behind. Uh, that salesman again. I don't know why he keeps bothering you. Did that pop up on screen? Did it work, guys? Let me test it out. Konnichiwa. Oh, it did. Oh, there we go. Konnichiwa. Nice. Brilliant. <laughs> Look at Chopper. Look, he's so cute. I love him. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, in stark contrast to what this guy was saying at the beginning of the game. Is the Vault Tech rep already there? He is already there. I'm pretty sure you shouldn't be there yet, but never mind. <laughs> uh, we'll go and speak to the Vault Tech rep in just a second. You can leave him there, and um, normally, Nate is like, oh, the guy is persistent, and he keeps giving out lines about the guy being there at the door, and you can just wait and wait and wait, and then they keep uh, giving all these uh, increasingly fun, like, different uh, lines about, you should really open the door, you should really answer the door. But anyway. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're living in terror to me. I mean, we've got a car. This fridge is fully stocked, full of beverages, and and uh, we've got this nice house. Uh, we've got we've got a robotic servant as well. In stark contrast to uh, the dialogue that we've been given at the beginning of the game, Robin and, and, um, and the of the it's kind. <laughs> I'm not going to defend this opening at all. It's kind of a weak opening. To a Fallout game, okay? Um, it's not the best, but uh, it gets more interesting as the game get, get, goes on, uh, where you uh, start to uh, question themes about the game. And actually, uh, I won't go into it right now, okay? But um, for your first experience of Fallout 4, this is kind of a weak opening. But um, if you stick with it and you go through it, and we'll be covering some stuff as we go through it as well, it gets a hell of a lot more interesting as the game progresses. It just gives a bad first impression, though. Good Hello day. there, vault tech rep. Uh, go on. Go on. Nice <laughs> to find you, ma'am. You can't begin to know how happy I am to finally speak with you. I've been trying for days. It's I'm going to turn up a tad for myself. Urgency, I assure you. I'm here now. I'm here now. <laughs> so you are. So you are. Now I know you're a busy woman, so I won't take up much of your time. Time being um, <laughs> a precious commodity. I'm here today to tell you that because of your family service to our country, you have been pre-selected for entrance into the local vault. Vault 111. Now, you'll notice there as well, the speech uh, options are very different to what they were like in the past. This is another weakness, in my opinion. They're generalized. They're generalized into four types of responses. Uh, why you're going to ask questions. 
Uh, X is generally a kind of snarky, sarcastic uh, response. Uh, B is like to uh, end a conversation generally. And then A is just to progress the uh, conversation. Um, pardon me. Now, it's kind of weak. Um, you get speech checks in this uh, form of, uh, 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 of speech, but uh, they just come up as like, um, like yellow for easy checks, uh, orange for medium difficulty, and then red for hard. And uh, then your charisma will factor into that as well, how high your charisma is. Um, there's no way of like, there's no way of like really putting in different types of speech checks into conversation like science and, and things like in the past. Um, there's no real way of either like sort of role play in your response either. And sometimes the responses that you do give, you wouldn't be able to predict what the character is actually going to say. But uh, we're going to be uh, sarcastic with this vault tech rap again. Look, I, I'm really busy. Oh, of course, of course. This won't take but a moment. It's just a matter of verifying some information. Need to make sure you're cleared for entrance in the unforeseen event of uh, <coughs> total atomic annihilation. There we go. It actually states there, sarcastic. The apocalypse? Well, hell, sign me up. <laughs> That's the spirit. Now, let's see. Okay, and here's where we get to build our character. Now, I've um, I've got a pre uh, notion of what we're gonna do. Um, I'm not un not 100 percent sure that some of my decisions are gonna be great. Um, in all fairness, um, let's see. We're gonna. I'll explain uh, what they're going. Why I'm putting these up to the points that they are. Oh wow! Holy guacamole! How have I got so many points? Hold on, let me take them all down. I totally miscalculated my build. Oh, right, I was going by 21 points available, but I wasn't taking into consideration the one down the board. Oh, that changes everything then. Okay, now, I can't see or show you the perk chart right now, okay? But my general, um, my general uh, thinking behind uh, what we're gonna be um, putting stats into is going to be based on what perks I uh, I essentially uh, well what perks I'm gonna um, deem essential okay I'm gonna put um, perception up to four and I'll explain why momentarily okay charisma is gonna go up this changes everything actually because I got spare points my luck I needed to be five but I might pop that up to six That'll get us uh, to some incredibly powerful perks. Um, what I generally do, though, I put the stat up to um, just under the perk that I um, that I definitely want in that uh, in that special, uh, because there's a bobblehead for every special, just like there is in Fallout Three, and that bobblehead will put that stat up by one and there's one bobblehead for each uh, of the uh, seven uh, the seven uh, special stats along the side and then I will get Jesus Christ who said that <laughs> listen sarcasm is easily the best option in most instances just for the delivery sometimes like sometimes some of the options though they're like completely 180 on what the response that you uh, think that they're gonna give is gonna be. It's really weird. Some of the, the dialogue's kind of, the way they handle the dialogue in this game is is kind of one of its weaknesses, if you ask me. It's um, it's okay. It's not like a, it's not like horrible, but uh, I miss the old way of doing things in Fallout. <laughs> Colleen, don't mind me, just cheering myself up after my save file cock up. You save file cock up? On oh, what game? This game? <laughs> Um, right. Oh, hold on. I returned to a game I had... Sorry, I missed what you said. I returned to a game I hadn't played in a while and accidentally started a new game. It auto-saved and I lost my previous progress. I ain't happy... Oh, no. No, don't you just hate it when that happens, Colleen? That's the worst. That is the worst. I'm so sorry. What game was it? I'm curious. I'm curious what game it was. Right. Um, bear with, guys. Bear with. 
Because I've got all these points left over, I'm actually not sure what to pick. So I'm going to have to go and uh, <laughs> go and look up the perk chart real quick. Right, here we go. go. I know I know a couple that I'm going to do for certain, okay? And uh, I certainly want intelligence on one, which is the polar opposite of what you should do in Fallout New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas, there's absolutely no reason uh, to put any points into uh, charisma in Fallout New Vegas. So, Fallout New Vegas, you always do this. You always put charisma at one, and you put, e depending on uh, what you want to do, early on you either put your intelligence up to nine or ten to get a maximum amount of skill points back um some people put it on nine and they just leg it to um the um what's it called the place where you get the implants and they just get there that's the first thing they bolt it straight over to there and get the intelligence uh, upgrade i'm going to be doing the complete opposite i'm going to be putting my intelligence on one and leaving it there um charisma is no longer a dump stat either it's um it's totally useless in Fallout New Vegas. But here it's not so much of a dump stat. So I'm gonna be putting that straight up to six to begin with, and luck up to six as well. Strength, um strength I'm gonna put on three for the time being. That's not great either though. Um because strength um is actually it it dictates um your melee uh in this game, but it also uh factors in your carry weight as well so the higher your strength the more that you can carry three is not a huge amount three is not a huge amount and um that might be a problem especially on survival okay but we'll deal with it we'll deal with it um also another thing about fallout 4 as well if i just take everything back down again uh you basically in fallout 3 in new vegas you can be an absolute say uh absolute genius right but then be competent and uh, say five points in most other stats you can't do that in this game you can't play as a generalist who is absolutely superb and the leader in his field in whatever choice of stats that you want you just can't even them out across the board so um th it takes a little bit more thought and uh you can't really play as a generalist you do have to really think about what you're going to specialize in so uh let's put that back to what it was We've got six there six there right uh perception needs to be four and strength needs to be three and then we've got six to play with uh now then uh by my earlier incorrect calculations I was going to leave my endurance in one. That was what was terrifying me, okay? Because endurance is um, it better it uh, relates to your uh, how how long you can sprint for, and also your HP. So leaving on that, that on one on survival would have been an absolute nightmare. Let's take a look at agility though, because agility, to my mind, is actually one of the strongest perks in the game. Uh, I think. I think we're going to put that up to three straight off the bat, okay? Because that will give us, uh, immediately give us access to sneak. Which uh, is going to be extremely useful, especially on survival. Um, and I think, I think we need to go in endurance. Because I really don't like that endurance being on one. We are going to be fragile as hell. How many points have we got left over? Four. If I get... If I get endurance up to four, and then we got a point to play with. Intelligence one is going to hurt us in some ways, but I'm going to explain my uh, the method to my madness shortly uh, when we get into the game proper. What were we on for luck? Six, right? Okay, go on. I'm going to put another point in strength. That extra strength is not is going to be welcome on this mode because, like I say, it's tied to uh, carry weight as well, and uh, carry weight is going to be really important in survival. Really, really important. <laughs> Kaching, Jojo, nice. Uh, Colleen, uh, fear effect. Oh no way, no way. I know that game. Is it, is um Sedna the newer one though? Because that's a really old game, right? It was fear effect and fear effect two on. PlayStation, I want to say. PlayStation. 
Uh, Lizards, I once made a Fallout 4 character that eventually got to 11 in all stats, 12 for intelligence. It was a slog. That's uh, another great thing about this game, though. Like, tri Fallout 3, you capped a 10, and you hard capped a 10. So if you pushed your stat up to max, and then you picked up the bobblehead after that, that was a waste, because uh, it, wouldn't ben it wouldn't benefit you. It wouldn't factor in. You wouldn't go up to, like, 11, for example. This game, though... You can push it as far as you want. You can keep going as well. I think you can only level it up to 10, but then with various bits of gear and buffs from, like, uh, drinks and stuff, you can go far beyond that. I, I think w with all the um, buffs and, and p the right perks, I think you can push your strength up to, like, like m maybe even higher than this, but I want to say, like, in the high 20s. This crazy. You can like, just, like, keep going and keep going. So if I wanted to now, I can put one of these stats up fully to 10 and pick up the bobblehead later on, and it would go to 11. Um, the only way you can push it over, though, is by, like, getting bobbleheads, getting gear with um, uh, extra stats on, or using various com consumables for a temporary buff as well. But that's crazy, yeah. <laughs> Got your character up to everything in 12. That must have taken a long time. That must have taken a long time. I think in this um, Fallout as well, the, what you want to aim for in your build is perks. Uh, don't worry so much about... Um, it, it does. It is important, don't get me wrong. But what's really going to make you powerful in this game is perks. And uh, we'll go over how um, you obtain perks momentarily. Because it's very, very different to past Fallout games. Very, very different indeed. Colleen, yeah, it's the new one. Not played the others, but saw it on PS Store. Quite cheap. So I figured, why not? Absolutely, right? Why not? When it's cheap like that. Right, are we happy with our build? I think we're happy with our build. Uh, that looks good to me. All that's left now, then, is to uh, pop in a name. And this is one of the other reasons why we're going to play a girl today. And that is because we are going to be called... Boobies. <laughs> and there's, there's a legit reason why that I want to show you. And it's really, really funny. Wonderful. That's everything. Uh, just going to walk this over to the vault. Congratulations on being prepared for the future. Um, thanks again. Hey, it's peace of mind. That's worth a little paperwork, right? For you and Sean, no price is too high. <laughs> Good answer. I have my moments. Now, Codsworth. There we go. He said it. He said it. This game actually has uh, recorded voice lines for some really, really funny names. Like Bacon is one of them. You can call your character Bacon and Codsworth will actually say Bacon. But yeah, he says boobies and I find it hilarious that throughout the game now, he's going to keep in, keep on calling us Miss Boobies. And that, that, just, that just amuses me. Guys, I'm really sorry. My doorbell is ringing, and I'm not sure if anyone's in. I just got to dash off real quick. I'll be, I'll be. Sorry about this. Hey, oh, sorry about that. Right, okay. I do apologize, right? Let's crack on. Uh, Cody. Uh, I may, may have uninstalled it through, uh, though, out of anger. May reinstall it again soon. Were you, were you quite far into the game? Because if, if you were, then that's, uh, that's really bad, but... If not, then at least uh, at least that's not so bad, right? You don't have too much to, uh, to replay. Oh, I gotta press the mobile, right? By the way, as well, 
Um, I kind of uh, deliberately altered the male character as well because. Um, oh, actually, that's a spoiler. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna carry on with that. My bad. Um, if you pick the sarcastic option here, though, uh, you get an insight as to how the baby might have been conceived. Oh, right. The park. With you. Because I want to get pregnant again. Sir? Mom? You should come and see this! Codsworth? What's wrong? Also, if you're playing as the male, and you pick the sarcastic option, he does refer to the same uh, sort of thing happening, but in a different way. There is legit a different voice line recorded, which is nice. I swear Codsworth didn't have this dark paint job before. It's unique from the other Mr. Handys that you come across. I don't remember him being like this like kind of gun metal grey colour. Maybe I'm misremembering. Anyway, the news program is being saying something really dramatic and important. Oh, before you leave, though, remember to to say goodbye to Codsworth. Codsworth, stay safe, honey. And your family as well, Mom. Oh, my. Is does it? There's no reason to do that. It doesn't change a thing. I just find it really nice that they programmed in a voice line for if you went for, if you were if any player was like that concerned about Codsworth that they could go back and click on him. And you have that nice little voice line between the two of them. Also, I'm not going to do it right now. But if you run down that way. Uh, if you, if, say you decided to explore the street a bit because you were curious. And you run down that way. And you ran around just looking around the street. Oh, I just, fe I just missed the bridge. And just looking around. Um, the bomb does actually blow up and you die. Which is also cool as well. That if you don't follow the, uh, the critical path. <laughs> the bomb will go off, and you will die. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay. You did get pretty far on the way. That forward, sucks. I'm sorry, on. Colleen. That really sucks. We need to get in. We're on the list. Infant, adult male, adult female. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Good luck, right, let's run away from our husband and child. Keep up, Slowpoke! Jesus! I've been talking shit about this opening quite a bit, but I will admit that this part is quite nice and dramatic as far as uh, Fallout openings go. And you get to see the bombs drop as well, which is also interesting. I'll get over it eventually. <laughs> if it's a fun game, though, you get to replay it. I guess there's that. There's a silver line into every cloud, Colleen. Hey. Okay. My housemate did something similar to that before, a few years ago, on um, Odin Sphere on PS4. <laughs> he, he, um, <laughs> he beat the game and unlocked like. Ultra, ultra hard, or whatever. And then he saved on the same save, though, because I don't know why he did it, but he just completely saved over his save. So he was like right back at the beginning of the game, but on ultra, ultra hard difficulty that he just unlocked. And he was like, "Oh, I didn't. I thought it would still be able to. Ah, oh, was it? I just saved it on the same save because I thought, you know, <laughs> he was really, he was really gutted about that." Give me that! Hurry up, buddy! I want my suit. Are you gonna? Give me, give me that suit. Give me that suit, lady. Thank you. 
Are they gonna? Do, I'm just. If, right. if they got little baby sized vault suits. I guess not, right? I guess not. Oh, you're gonna love it. This is one of our most advanced facilities. Not that the others aren't great, mind you. It's gone. Our home. Everything we had. Father down in DC. DC? Nah, they're not gonna be doing so well. I've played Fallout 3. I know the state of DC. Sorry. All right, Mr. Science Man. Excuse me. Just step in here and put your vault suit on. Every time we've got all this, it'll be okay. There's one thing I do like about the dialogue uh, style in this game, though, is that if you um, if you mash through conversation to skip lines, it also goes by the button that you press. So, say you're mashing the sarcastic button to skip dialogue lines, your character will be like, "Oh, it's taking forever." Oh, they just go on and on and on, and they'll act like an asshole all like that as well. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool thing about the uh, dialogue. The depending on um, what button you mash through uh, dialogue with, um, your character will actually respond in that way as well, which is kind of funny. I'll show what I mean uh, in a short while. But anyway, um, how's the baby? Who is my little guy? Huh? I'm not going far. I'll just. Be over there. There she is, see? Mommy's not going far. All set? Just step inside and put on your vault suit. That was me putting on my vault suit. I've always, like, wondered. Do, do they just, like, change there and then in front of everyone? There's no, like... They don't even have a curtain for us to, like... Do you know what I mean? It's just... You know what I mean? Just get changed into your vault suit right in, right in the open. Uh, Colleen, well, only one thing for it. Time to load up Ishin and kick some ass. Oh, and watch this stream and be entertained. No pressure. Oh god, I got ton I'm under tons of pressure now. I got all the pressure on me. I'm sorry guys, this is a bit of a slow opening to Fallout 4. Even still, though, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot to talk about right at the beginning of this game, but um, we'll be uh, we'll be in the swing of things shortly. So now we're in uh, cryostasis. The sad thing about this opening is that, like, I can understand how this would seem like a real strange, contradicting, jarring opening to uh, Fallout 4. Um, especially if this is your first Fallout as well. But the thing is about this opening, it gets much more interesting as time goes on. I'll explain myself as time goes on as well. Hey! Put down that gun! Oh no, he just gone and shot my man! Son of a bitch! Give me back my baby! That's my baby. Give me back my baby! Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. Oh, by the way, I was hammering X. If you keep hammering A, I think it's A anyway, you can like bang on the glass for more drama. Uh, like drama. But I was mashing the wrong button. And then we go back into uh, cryo sleep. Surely, Ryan, there is a good chance, unless he got, like, shot in the brain or the heart, surely there's a potentially good chance that he, m after being, like, cryo-frozen again, that he could, uh, he could, I guess, I guess he, 
he must have got shot in the heart, right? Because with him being re-frozen after getting shot, there'd be a good chance that he might survive that. Unless it was the heart, I guess. Anyway. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, God. I got my characters acting like she's in a hurry, even though I was just like, he might have survived. And just looking through. Right. All I want is his wedding ring. That's a very important thing that I want back. Right, let's be sure let's be sure to close this uh, cryopod as well, just in case my theory is correct. And he could survive. Uh you know the wound would be frozen as well, see? And you know, like technology and stuff might have advanced, you know, we might we might be able to save him, so let's make sure that that's closed. Um and you can see all these other residents around as well. Can you open these? No. Okay, so they're not functioning. I couldn't remember that, whether that was, uh, uh, you were able to do that or not. Okay, so we're just gonna go through, uh, the vault as normal. I'm gonna pick up everything that isn't nailed down, though. Uh, I'm literally gonna collect everything that I come across, and, uh, there'll be a reason for that as well, which I'll explain in just a short while. It's our first glimpse of an enemy. He's on the other side of this, uh, window. It's our first rad roach that we encounter and our first weapon as well. Like I say, I'm gonna I'm gonna take literally everything that isn't nailed down because at this point in the game it'd only be beneficial to. Uh, there's absolutely no reason not to. So take everything that isn't nailed down. Uh, right, cool. This um, security terminal, it's got um, some information about uh, let's have a quick look. Right, Vault 111 is designed to test the long-term effects of suspended animation on unaware human subjects. Uh, security staff are responsible for maintaining installation integrity and monitoring science staff activity. I don't know if um, you caught it there because I was being a bit silly and talking over the game. But um, we were told that we were being put in a decontamination pod. Uh, but it turns out that they were secretly freezing us, uh, cryo-freezing us. Um, this is vault Tech, by the way. Um, we've seen some of the stuff that they get up to with these uh, vaults in f when we went through Fallout New Vegas. Some of that stuff was real nasty stuff as well. This, um, this is kind of an underwhelming vault, if you ask me. It's very small, and it's basically, oh yeah, we were um, testing uh, cryogenically freezing people that were unaware that we were going to cryogenically freeze them. That's essentially uh, the gist of it. There are problems that go wrong though. Um, let's see. I'm not going to read that. Uh, I'm not going to read the rest of the terminal because I can't be bothered. But there are things that go wrong. Uh, like a lot of those uh, pods. I think every single one apart from mine and my husband's actually malfunctioned. And everyone died in the process except for, well, me, because uh, my husband would have survived, but he got shot by some dickhead who uh, we don't know who that is yet, by the way. Now, uh, there's uh, many a true nerd uh, brought up something. Uh, he made a defense video for Fallout 4, and uh, he brought up something really interesting about this vault that I never thought of. That maybe the experiment wasn't, in fact, uh, the cryogenic freezing. Maybe. Uh, it was uh, more to do with uh, the uh, the social experiment was more to do with uh, the staff of the vault and how they would handle the care of uh, said uh, frozen people because if the frozen people were say very important figures like government leaders or uh, heads of uh, heads of corporations or presidents or anyone of high value anyone who's really uh, important in society how would the maintenance and care and looking after of those highly valuable assets uh, go because it turns out that um, there may have been a little bit of trouble amongst the staff after the freezing but uh, anyway let's press on right uh, where's our first enemy are we going we're going to approach an enemy sometime soon I think so. Ah, our first enemy. Now, I want to draw your attention to something else, uh, which uh, is going to be an interesting thing, to say the least, but it's going to play heavily into um, some of my theories as time goes on. Um, 
some of the reasons why the intro the intro to this game is actually uh, pretty interesting as time goes on. Now, if I hit the VATS button, I can VATS. I can VATS this rad roach. But if you uh, have a look at my left wrist there, I'm currently not wearing a Pip-Boy. Now, the reason why that's interesting is because the whole reason why uh, you can do VATS as a protagonist usually is because of your Pip-Boy. Uh, VATS stands for Volt, uh, ass Volt Tech Assisted Targeted System, and it happens through the Pip Boy on your arm. Uh, through computers, um, somehow, uh, it makes you shoot better by wearing a computer on your wrist. Don't ask me why, it just do, okay? Uh, that's the law. But, we don't have a Pip Boy, and we just clearly used VATS. We clearly used VATS without a Pip Boy. Hmm, very, uh, very intriguing. Very intriguing indeed. Okay, um, beer bottles. Beer bottles are going to be essential as well because we're on, uh, we're on uh, survival right now, right? Uh, survival difficulty, which means just like, uh, just like in Skyrim, we're going to need to keep on top of a few things. We're going to need to keep ourselves hydrated, fed, and well rested as well. Um, hydration is different to uh, Skyrim. Uh, Skyrim's. Uh, survival mode uh that's not actually part of that game but uh it's a big deal in fallout we're gonna have to keep on top of our food our drink and our sleep uh on top of that as well though um is uh disease now uh you can get diseases in skyrim but it's nowhere near as debilitating as it is in fallout 4 survival um so uh with these empty bottles i saw a sink around here somewhere you see now that i've got a few empty bottles in my inventory I can actually fill uh, these bottles when I approach a water source. So let's fill them up. Banana, what's up? War, war never changes. Also, hi, what's up, banana? Thanks for coming along, buddy. How are you doing today? Happy Big Friday. Happy Big Friday to you, buddy. How are you doing? You okay? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well. I would ask you about your week, but obviously I had a chat with you yesterday. But uh, I hope you've had a good Friday. Hope you're enjoying yourself. And thanks for coming along to hang out as well today, Banana. Right, now we've got full... Uh, we filled up all of those bottles, bottles of water there. And uh, they will be uh, put back into our inventory now, converted into purified water. Which is going to be extremely useful on this mode, for obvious reasons. Right, um, don't miss this... Uh, this... Uh, this terminal here. Because this terminal contains one of the... Uh, hollow tape video games. So if we just play it Here we go. It's got a little uh, Donkey Kong esque game built into this uh. You can eject this as well and play it on your Pip-Boy at any time. There's multiple uh, little games like this throughout the uh, throughout the the game uh, what, What's jump? There we go. There's jump. So there's a little, quick little go If you really want to you can spend uh, as much time as you need to to obtain the top score on this game uh, and uh, make sure that your name is entered in on the terminal. We're not going to though. Uh, they're just going to show off uh, this game. Uh, let's exit the game. And uh, we'll take that with us as well for our collection. Uh, when I mentioned the top 10 as well, you literally can beat the score. They're all the uh, list of everyone's top score there. I like how they're entered in three letters as well, like old school arcade machines. That's really cool. Right, let's press on though. Because uh, we need to get out of this old vault. Uh, that, that guy got zapped. Can I go over there and grab his meat without getting zapped? Do you know what? I don't think I've ever tried. Oh shit! No, no, that was a bad idea. That was a bad idea. Forget that. Forget that. There will be more of these little bastards up ahead though. But they're no they're not really any problem. You can one shot them regardless of their size. Now, the skeletons dotted around as well. You can actually get dialogue by uh, activating them. What happened here? Where is everyone? Oh, give me that. I'll take that. That's wood. Right. It would have been nice to have collected the meat off that rad roach. There's another thing as well. Meat equals food. So we'll be taking all of that. I'm literally taking everything that I can with me. I'm taking everything that isn't nailed down. 
Uh, banana working while watching you. So yeah, not bad, I guess. <laughs> oh no, you working at this time of night, dude? You work way too hard. You work way too hard. All right, we'll take the eyeglasses. They're very important. And also, we get hold of our first gun here as well. Uh, you can, like I say, you can click on all these skeletons Is and get dialogue. Left? Every single one that you pass. And they'll have, uh, and your protagonist will have a voice line as well. Give me those cigarettes. Ooh, more rounds for my gun. Fantastic. Make sure to check every nook and cranny. I've taken some damage as well from uh, getting shocked, from running into that uh, electricity like a, like an idiot. My intelligence is on one, to be fair, so I feel like uh, that is within role-playing. Um, but I'm going to take a drink out of this sink. Because this is a free heal as well. And you could do this for as long as you need to to get your health up to full as well. There we are. That's full health, I think. And uh, the best thing about this, uh, these sinks in this vault is not the water's not radiated either. And radiation works in a very different way uh, to how it did in the past in this game as well. But we'll cover that um, as time goes on. There's um, the cryolator in here. It's master locked. <coughs> I'm not sure if it's like um, still active in the game, but there used to be a bug in this game where you could like obtain this pretty much immediately. Well, not immediately. You do have to leave the vault um, and go a little tiny bit into the game. But then you come back here and you can you can grab this straight away. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not even entirely sure if it does does still work. Pardon me a second. Excuse me, sorry. But early on in this game's life, it certainly was uh, a bug where you could uh, grab that pretty much straight away at the start of the game. If you ask me, though, it's not even that great a gun. It's the only one of its kind, but it's not that great. And it takes super, super duper rare ammo as well. If I only had a bobby pin. But, uh, yeah, you can come back and unlock that once you unlock Master Lockpicking. There are a few other bits and bobs that we can loot as well. I think... I think that's it for the time being. Yeah, I think they're all the containers that you can uh, loot in here. Uh, right, if you go onto this terminal here as well, this explains uh, pretty much what happened uh, between uh, the, the staff of the vault. Uh, Vault 111's Overseer Instructions. Confidential, confidential, confidential. Overseer's eyes on only. Violation, VTP, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Vault 111 is designed to test the long-term effects of the uh, suspended animation on unaware human subjects. Your staff will be on short-term assignment uh, to monitor basic cardio pul pulmonary and cognitive functions. Long-term monitoring will be handled remotely by vault tech technicians. Under no circumstances, suspension to be disrupted. This includes the administration of life-saving measures. Your staff is also considered expendable. Insubordination or attempts to evacuate prematurely are capital violations. Uh, un unused cry cryogenic pods are the preferred method for cadaver disposal. Uh, overseer's log. Uh, let's go for supplies running low. Uh, there's been no all clear yet, even though we're nearing the end of the 180 day mandatory shelter period. Supplies were never intended to last more than that. So they deliberately got um, provided with uh, uh, not enough supplies to last the 180 day mandatory shelter period. Uh, and despite my best efforts, people are beginning to question what we're doing down here. If people think we can just leave when the, the 180 days are up, they're insane. The radioactive exposure would still be potent enough to fry everyone if the vault seals are breached that early. The whole point of the all clear was to receive additional instructions from the main office. I don't know what to do. I can't open the vault. I can't just expect our supplies to last forever. I just have to keep everything under control until the all clear. Like I was saying, it would be an interesting point if the official purpose and why they were put in here was to um, see 
what the cryostasis would do to people is just a ruse and the real experiment what was what was happening between the staff um, especially seeing as this note here actually confirms that the supplies that they were provided with were not enough right mutiny a faction led by the security personnel have turned on me, demanding they be allowed to leave the vault. Idiots. I will not open the door to be irradiated to death out there. I am con consolidating the remaining supplies, putting the staff on lockdown. We're going to have to start prioritizing who deserves what little food we have left. I've been too damn generous with the rations. One Be shall stand, one <laughs> shall fall. Thanks, Lizard. Thanks for that. Um... Where was I? Oh, I've been too generous with the rations. If people don't like it, well, that's fewer mouths to feed. So yeah, it all went a little bit wrong. A little bit wrong. Um, what's the note I'm looking for? Open evacuation tunnel. Here we go. Open an evacuation tunnel. Nice. Right. Let's uh, keep on keeping on. Let's get out of this uh, bloody vault. Again, right? Just to prove my point... We don't have a Pip-Boy. We do not have a Pip-Boy on our arm. Yet I can use VATS. Uh, a different... Um, uh, another thing as well. If I just lock onto this guy. Uh, VATS in New Vegas and Fallout 3 used to stop time completely. But this Rad Roach is moving. He's moving. He's very, very slowly moving. But he's still moving. VATS is different in this game as well. VATS um, doesn't outright stop time. It just slows it down to a crawl, almost like a bullet time sort of scenario. I'm going to take the 50-50 on this guy. I think he's noticed me as well because his health bars popped up in red. So I'm going to take the 50-50 and do some uh, vats killing. Here we are. You don't have to at this point though. It's really easy just to line up your shot with vats. Take the shot. Oops. Right, Line up vats, take the shot. That's an old Fallout trick though. Just line up the shot with that. Take the shot. Oh, there's a couple more. I'll take the uh, 71%. Oh, and typically I miss the first shot. That's fine, though. We'll still have AP left for a couple of shots on this guy. There we are. <coughs> That's a lot of meat on the ground as well. We'll be taking that. Nom, 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 nom. Of course, we're not going to eat it yet, though. You don't want to eat raw meat. That's a bad idea very bad idea but I'll be taking all the bug meat thank you very much right okay <clears throat> and opening this door we just uh, <clears throat> pardon me sorry we just come through here kill this little bastard right don't forget to always grab where is it grab this vault 111 jumpsuit new very important to grab that it's not really but it's, it's kind of unique in some ways now we've just doubled back on ourselves there's the cryopods there uh this door we couldn't get through initially but we just looped around that's how small this uh this uh vault actually is it's tiny tiny little vault not much to it at all ah shit there's a rad roach somewhere you little bastard how about you Okay, and take his meat. Always take his meat. Right. Ooh. Ooh, more, more ammo there. Nice. Nice. You can click on these skeletons as well, like I was saying. You'll get a unique dialogue for every single one. Did I take your meat? Give me your meat. Right, there's going to be one other little bastard now waiting in ambush. Oh? Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's where that guy over there came from. Ah. Alright, never mind. I ain't going to complain. Right. See, here is the Pip-Boy. We, we have now picked up a Pip-Boy for the very first time. Yeah, I've been using VATS on multiple occasions. That's actually going to be quite important later on, though. Do you know what else is kind of a little weird as well? That... Fallout 4 basically makes it so you need a Pip-Boy to be able to open and shut vault doors. 
Which wasn't the case in the past. Not to my knowledge, anyway. Put those glasses on. That's an extra point of perception. We'll be taking that. Hell yeah. Um, and I think that's it. I think we're good than that. Right, let's get out of here. This is what I mean about vault doors. So, allegedly, unless vaults are different in Boston for XYZ reasons, whatever that might be. Allegedly, you are unable to open vault doors without a, without a pit boy. Saying that though as well, I think it might be implied in Fallout 3 that pit boys can't be removed. I think, anyway. I've got a vague memory of there being a Gary corpse um, in the uh, Brotherhood Outca Outcast base for the Anchorage DLC. Where they were trying to um, remove his pip boy um, so that we, they could get into the simulation or something or open the door. And they ended up having to kill him because they uh, took his arm off completely. But then Vegas, New Vegas, you're giving uh, Doc, Mich Doc Mitchell's uh, pip boy right at the beginning. So I guess it's very inconsistent all the way through. Right, let's get out of here. Hurry! All right, and no, I don't want to remake my character. Thank you very much, game. Here we go. This, these bits of the game, these games, though, is something that Bethesda always nails. The surfacing or exiting from the vault is always an uh, amazing moment in in Bethesda Fallout. They really, really nail it. Unless it's Fallout seventy six when they just put a fade to black. Oh, it's beautiful every time. Every single time. And as your eyes adjust to the light, there's the place that you once called home. Oh, you've got to admire it, though. You really do. It really hits hard. It really hits hard. Anyway, I just realized something. <laughs> the uh, music in this game uh, is not not music. Music's fine. Radio. Radio is uh, is DMCA. So I'm gonna have to turn that all the way down. Uh, there we go. Did that stay? That did stay. We don't want any, uh, there's, bo there's John Bovey on the, uh, in-game radio, and we don't want to get, uh, we don't want to get in trouble over that. Right, again, scavenge around these areas, okay, you're going to want to take everything that you can get your hands on while you've got the carry weight, and, uh, you may as well anyway. It's all going to be really useful down the line. Um, there's some good crates down here as well, full of, uh, good stuff. Take everything, literally take everything that isn't nailed down. Uh, for the time being. I want to show you something very interesting that's quite close by as well. Uh, if we go down this way, which isn't the intended way, uh, is that it up there? I believe that's it up there. Yeah, here we are. Okay, if I come up here... <coughs> there's a little outpost here. And it's got this strange marking on it. Painted on it. We know that someone's been here very recently because they've got water supplies, which I will help myself to. Actually, I'll take the dirty water as well. Um, someone has been looking out over the entrance to Vault 111. It's clearly marked for a reason. Oh, there's more water down there as well. I'll take that. And uh, they've been uh, supplying, uh, supplying themselves with water to drink and just sitting here looking over the entrance. As if they were expecting something to leave. Or rather, someone, perhaps. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Right, let's press on. I'm going to pick up uh, a few more bits and pieces on the way. Uh, Physio, what's up, bro? Uh, being a sink is a lame theory because why would the creator of the synths allow you to defeat him if you are a synth hmm interesting 
Interesting. Okay, yeah, again, as I've been uh, saying, just pick up everything that isn't nailed down for the time being. And here we are, back at home. Hang on. Is that Bon Jovi? I think that might just be part of the, uh... Part of the in-game music to... I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Anyway, we turned the radio down anyway. It'll be fine. And here we are. Our, own, our old buddy Codsworth has been waiting for us. Uh, right. You're still here. Codsworth. Still here. So other people could still be alive too. Well, of course I'm still here. Surely you don't think a little radiation could deter the pride of General Atomics International. But you will seem the worse for wear. Best not let the hubby see you in that state, huh? Where is Sir, by the way? He's dead, Codsworth. They killed him. Uh yeah. They they killed him. Oh, Mom, these things you're saying, these, these terrible things, I, I believe you need a distraction. Yes, a distraction to calm this, this dire mood. It's been ages since we've had a proper family activity. Checkers, or, or perhaps charades. Oh, Sean does so love that game. <laughs> is, is the lad uh, with you? Uh, they stole him. He's gone. <clears throat> God damn it. Someone took him. They stole my baby. It's worse than I thought. You're suffering from hunger induced paranoia. Not eating properly for 200 years will do that, I'm afraid. Wait, what? 200 years? 200 years? What? Are you sure? A bit over 210. Rotation and some minor dings to the old chronometer. That means you're uh, two centuries late for dinner. <laughs> Perhaps I can whip you up a snack if you must be famished. Now this um this acts is like a tutorial as to how speech checks work in the game. I think even if you had like a charisma at one, uh, this is guaranteed every time. So we're gonna pick you, okay? Codsworth, you're acting. Yellow means easy, uh, orange means medium, red means difficult. Oh, I'm tired from lack of sleep. Brilliant. You get the, really get the impression as well that like, Codsworth's gone a little bit mad in the time he's been waiting here. He's just been diligently trying to look after the house after it's been blown to hell for just over a little over 200 years, and I think it's really got to him. <laughs> Stay with me, pal. Stay with me, pal. Focus. I'm afraid I don't know anything, Mum. The bombs came and all of you left in such a hurry. I thought for certain. Salmon! Uh, okay, I have finally returned. Work internet was having a shit. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the, you to say that like that, but that's why I laughed. Uh, but uh, I am home now, thank goodness. Yay! You could weekend can begin now, Salmon. Happy Big Friday, buddy. buddy. Happy Big Friday. Put work behind you and uh, let, let the weekend begin. Uh, right, thank you. Thank you, Codsworth. Uh, yes, let's do it. Alright. Oh. Lead the way. Right, now, I want to make sure that Codsworth doesn't speak. Oh shit, I didn't mean to shoot him. 
I want to make sure that he doesn't steal too much XP off me here. Because he will. He'll go on ahead and he will kill the enemies before you can get to them. So, let's try and get at least a hit on these bloat flies before Codsworth gets involved. I think there's a... Oi! Stop! Stop! Codsworth! You motherfucker! Oh, he, he fucking beat me to it. Right, I will take the meat though. Bastard. At least that one had a bobby pin on it, though. That's really quite important this early on. Right. Don't let him steal all the XP this time. Motherfucker. Stealing my XP. Right. Luckily, though, you can get this one through the window. If you can hit it. Oh! Oh, I thought that was... I thought I saw Codsworth in there already, and I was like... That cheeky. There we go. We got our level. Oh. There's one thing that I'm hoping that they draw, but we haven't got we haven't got one yet. Oh, bloatfly gland. Amazing. That's what I wanted. I'm going to take that and I'm going to hold on to that for some time. It'll just save me a little tiny bit of time down the line. If I grab a, a bloatfly gland right now. Oh, we got two. Okay. I only need one, but that's fine. I'll take two. Right, bloatfly meat as well as uh, as it goes. Right, let's talk to uh, Codsworth. Hey, Codsworth. <laughs> Salmon, I feel like a big fat cat now is in my future. Nice. Uh, Sean's out there. Sean's out there, Codsworth. I need to find him. What about Conklin, Mum? A few people there. And last I checked, they only pummeled me with sticks a few times before I had to run back home. Conquered? There's still people alive in Concord? Yes, although they're a bit rough. Uh, you remember the way? Just across the southern footbridge out of the neighborhood and past the Red Rocket Station? I shall remain here okay. the home. So Codsworth's giving us our, our first lead uh, as to where to go. Um, I'm going uh, I'm gonna take my first break right now, guys. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I really need the bathroom. <laughs> so... Uh, when I come back, though, we'll uh, explore a bit more of Sanctuary and uh, tidy it up a little bit, I think. And then um, be on our way towards uh, Concord, which is the lead that uh, Codsworth has just given to us. So uh, bear with me. Uh, I won't be long. Okay, I'll be five minutes, but no longer than seven. Pretty much uh, the usual. So uh, I will be I'll be.